Hello everyone. In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to merge bibliography data extracted from different databases, different citation or bibliography databases in one file and then use that for analysis using the BiblioShiny software. So typically we would merge bibliography data from Web Science or Scopus. For medical field, we would do it from PubMed. But the BiblioShiny software also supports few other databases like the Crocrun uh, library from the Netherlands and also the Dimensions database. And over time, the founders of this package, they have been adding more databases. In the very beginning, they could only support Scopus and Web Science, but now they can support few more databases. In the years to come, there may be more databases that can be supported using the Bibliometrics R package. So here, using this R script, I'm going to show you how to merge data extracted from Web Science and Scopus. I'm going to show you as an example for these two databases, but the same principle can be applied to all the databases supported by the Biblio Bibliometrics package. This is important. The database has to be supported by this package and only those databases you can use here but there are many databases which are not supported by this package. Those cannot be used here. Often people ask for Google Scholar that cannot be used here. Actually, to my knowledge, there are no software that can really handle Google Scholar so far, but there may be softwares that will be available in the years to come. But here, by now you should have a basic knowledge about R Studio and the way it works is that in this part here, we are going to write our script. And here we can see on the environment, the loaded data and history and so on. And here we can install our packages. We can see plots and so on. We have the help. And here we will see the activities that will be performed using our script here. Okay. So normally the R Studio works based on different packages. It supports some core function and then for different functions, we need to use different packages. And the package we use for bibliometric analysis is called Bibliometrics. If you have not installed it, you can just remove the hash in front of this line and then you can just click run. Select the line and then click run to install the package. But we have now installed the package. So I'm going to put hash in front of the line. So in R, when we have hash in front of the line, then that code is inactive. When you remove the hash, then it becomes active. If you already have installed it, but you have done it sometime back, then maybe it'd be a good idea to double check if the package is the latest version or not. To see that here, you will see under packages, you will see all the installed packages. You can click here and then you can click on update to update the package, okay? But in this case, I'm not going to update it. So I'm just going to load it. And actually I have done the loading by clicking here. Okay, when I clicked here, it already loaded. But another way of unloading it. So now I unloaded it. So, but another way of loading it would be just to run this command. So I put my cursor there and then I click run. And then it has been loaded. Okay, here this command is to use the BiblioShiny version of the bibliometrics package, which we will run later for all our analysis. But for now, I'm going to put a hash in front of it to deactivate it for now. But our main goal for this lecture is to merge bibliography data from multiple databases. Here, I have extracted data from multiple databases. One here you can see from a Scopus. Okay. So here, this is the version that we are going to use the beef text version. And another one we are going to use is from Web of Science. Here we are going to use the TXT format. Okay. So now the first step would be to load the data. And the second step would be to convert the loaded data, the raw data to a format that can be read by this bibliometrics package. And then the third step will be to merge them. And the fourth step would be to extract them in a CSV format so then we can use it in BiblioShiny. Okay, so these are the four, four steps that we are going to follow. And I'm going to provide you this R script. And what you need to know is simply to update it. 
So the thing that you have to update is the path here, okay? Is the location of the file. That is something you have to update for your file on your computer. Here I have it for mine, okay? So how to really read how to really update it to update it what you have to do is so let's say here you have this file so you click here and then you copy this path okay i'm going to actually replace this one and just to show you how it works i'm going to remove it so here dw i'm kind of in my mind referring to database from web of science so here i'm going to come in the middle and I'm going to paste the path that I have extracted. The path of the of the folder where my w web science folder, uh, web science extracted data is located. But here one important thing is that then you have to use this, this, these bars here. They has to be the other way. They has to be like this. So all of them, okay? All of them has to be like this. So I'm going to now update them manually as you can see. Okay, so I have updated all, yeah, no, one more here, done. So now in the end, we also have to mention the name of the file because in the Web of Science folder here, I have a few files, but which files are we talking about? We're talking about these files. So I'm going to copy the name and the format of this file is txt, okay? And then I'm going to paste it here, dot txt because this txt was already part of the name. So I have to just mention the format, okay? Similarly, we did it for the web of science, uh, for the Scoopus database, okay? So now I'm just going to click here and run. My data is loaded here. I'm going to click here and run again. My Scoopus data is also loaded here. Now in the second step, we are going to convert this data to a format that can be read by this package here, bibliometrics package. The main command here to do it is this one, convert to DF, okay? So here, notice one thing, this DW, it comes here in this place, okay? And this DS, it comes here in this place. So these are the file name, whatever name you use here, it has to be here. Whatever name you use here, it has to be here, okay? And then this name, you see, it comes here and this name you see it comes here. So whatever name you use here, it has to be here. Whatever you use here, it has to be here, okay? And here you see this file is from Web Science. So we say it's source, DB source is a Web Science and this one is a Scoopus. For Web Science, we use plain text format and for Scoopus, we use bib text, okay? So this is our main functionality here. And I'm going to clean my window here. So now we can just click anywhere in this line and run. And when it is successfully done, you will see this done. Otherwise, if there are some problems, you will see some error. Then we click here in this line and click run. If you just click on anywhere in the line and click run, then that, run, that line will be executed. And then it was also done. Now in the step three, we are giving it a name, the file name, which will be merged, which, which will contain the merged, uh, the merged data, bibliography data, we are calling it M, okay? You can give it any name, but whatever name you give here, you have to give the same name here. So we are giving it M and then we just run it, okay? So now you see, it, it is interesting to notice that our original file, for Web of Science had 198, from Scoopus it had 335. But the merged file has 395. So it should have been kind of more than 500, 533 or something, but it has only 395. That's because we have 135, 38 duplicate documents that has been removed from our file. So Web of Science and Scoopus, they index a lot of common articles and those are removed here from for our future analysis. So this is the most tricky part actually to match the duplicates and remove them before this command and this package, it was very difficult to do it manually. It could take six months to just go through all this data and making sure that 
they were properly removed and marched. But now we can do it in a much easier way, as you can see. So now we have it here, and now we can write a CSV file for this data, that 395 with 29 variables, and we can save it in a place where we have to give a path for that, okay? And then we have to give a name for the file. So let's say if I call it 22, okay? So this part of the name, you have to give it, whatever this part, the last part of the name, you have to give the name, whatever you want, dot .csv. Okay, so here, this part, whatever you want to give the name of the new file, dot .csv. But other part should be the location where you, will put, you want the file to be saved. So I'm just clicking here and I'm clicking run. Now, if I come here, I have this folder called Web Sciences Corpus Combined 2022. So this is the file that I can now use for analysis in BiblioShiny. So we can quickly open BiblioShiny. To open BiblioShiny, we can remove this command from here, this hash, and then we can just click run. Then we run BiblioShiny. Then we go to data. Here you have to remember there is something tricky. It sometimes works in different ways for different computers. So normally the logical way would be that then you go to browse here and then you select the file. So here is my file and I'm going to now open it and then start. So now you see it loaded properly because this is the file that has been already formatted in the bibliometric file structure that can be read by this software, this package, right? But in, for some cases, for some of you, it might happen that when you try this, it doesn't work. Then the option that works is that you go for raw file and then you select here, scoop us. And then you go to CSV and then you go and you select the file and then you open. And then it works, okay? So these are the two alternatives which works. But if you face any problem, feel free to reach me. But here I'm just going to show you how it looks like. So here we see that, okay, here are the main information that uh, is about our data file. The time span is this, and these are the number of uh, journals where these 395 articles were published and so on, right? So in another lecture, I'm going to show you the detailed functions of the Biblio, Biblio Shiny package. One more thing. So some of you may have multiple data files and how do you do? So it follows the same logic as I have already shown you, but still I would like to show you how it works. So for example, here I have two Scoopus files and I have three Web Science files, okay? So you see, I just have different file name in the end, okay? As you can see here. And then here, what we're doing, we are again creating multiple Scoopus and multiple uh, Web Science conversion files, okay, as you can see here. And then when we are going to march, we put all these M's together, okay? And then we follow the same principle for extracting it. So doesn't matter how many files from his scoopers data or web science or dimensions or PubMed you have, you can have many files. You can just put this, use this logic for arranging them and then marching them. Okay, great. So that's what I wanted to show you in this lecture and I hope you find this useful. If you have any queries, feel free to reach me. Thank you.